In this video I'm going to take a look at a chimney stack penetrating a slate roof. Before we go into the drawing I'm going to take a look at some of the details of chimney stacks. So straight off here we see that uh, there's a few details depending on the area that you live in and the wind exposure about the sizing of uh, a chimney and the height of the chimney to the top of the pot from the top of the flue gallery. Here we have uh, details regarding the heights and distances of the chimney regarding to a pitched roof when there's a window opening and in a flat roof and since you can remember you can slow this video down and take a look at the sizings that are on these and this is just a different view of that same drawing where there's a window and the distances that should be away from the window and uh, we have uh, the flues going through a chimney capping we have a, a tray uh, a built-in tray which is used for a cover flashing and this upstand is surrounded here is a 50 mil upstand but it can have a bigger upstand when it is in a dormer roof where there's a, a living area where the chimney stack cuts into that and uh, there's weep holes at the front of that there as well too to get rid of water and this drawn here the soak the the flashing is along the side down to where the soakers are the cover flashing there is actually different pieces you can see it in the picture here at the bottom of the screen uh, there's a good uh, view of that there and the details on a tiled roof and you can see that's a dormer roof you can see where the back of the tray actually comes into the into the roof space and there's another picture here from the textbook showing the apron flashing and it shows a tray as well and it shows a gutter the flashing at the back and it shows a soaker as well too and a pretty good picture of it fitted into a brick chimney stack with the um, the flashings which go around that. It can also be just cut in and there's a bit of debate between which is better. I would imagine the built-in is better but a lot of people think that the other where it's actually cut in and the lead is fitted in is equally as good. This is the detail that we're pretty much we're going to look at. Uh, it's going to be slightly different with a few more details in it and below at the bottom of the page you can see cows. Cows are used where maybe there might be um, not enough draw in the chimney or there could be downdraft maybe caused by proximity of older buildings. So to start off with what I'm going to do is I'm going to give me a bit of self a bit of space at the top of the page, come down about 80 or so, and I'm going to draw uh, use a pitch of 45 degrees. So I'm going to draw it down left and right. And I'm going to start by drawing a ridge board. Ridge board's only 20 millimeters wide, uh, 270 millimeters in depth, and you can have it standing up the same height as what the battens would be on the roof. So that's what I'm drawing here is just your angled and uh, size of the rafter I'm using is 150mm rafter, 25mm battens and uh, just projections from both sides. The spacings that I'm going to use because of slating is 250mm so I'll go right up to the, the ridge board uh, with the first uh, batten and then I'm going to measure 250s down and because I'm starting from the top I'm going to measure 250 right down along, along the left hand side where I'm going to have my chimney stack coming up through the roof. And I'm just going to do a few down on the right hand side to have the appearance of it, the roof continuing on. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to measure uh, a distance of uh, 600 millimeters uh, across from the center of the ridge board to start the wall. And if you've looked at the earlier videos of the chimney stack, you'll know that it should be uh, 550 millimeters for a 100mm block to surround the flue and uh, that's what I've done I've measured a block either side then inside of that uh, 550 and what I'm doing here at the bottom is I'm measuring from where the angle of the rafter will touch the back of the chimney for the gutter I measured up 75 a distance to allow where the gutter is going to be the last uh, the last batten that I've done here I've left as a kind of a triangular type shape because at that point there there is a uh, the lead that comes up the back gutter is fashioned and those if you're looking for the slate and detail just go back to the slate and detail that was done in one of the earlier videos but it's real simple because all you're doing is going to the top of one batten and you're following making sure that the other one is covering it you have the third layer of cover and a hundred mil is going over as the projection over the end of the center of the batten at the very top we would have a ridge slate 
and it matches the pitch of the roof you buy the slit to match your pitch and it's, this is going to be what's called a dry ridge where it's screwed down into the top of the ridge board and moving on here now to draw in my flues so the flues are uh, 50 millimeters in to get the edge of the flue from either side of the opening and I'm allowing 20 millimeters for the thickness of the edge of the flues uh, at scale of 1 to 10 this is quite small detail and this is why I'm rubbing some of these things out I'm measuring down 100 millimeters from the very top of the flue and then 450 for the distance between each of the flues this 450 will match your two blocks as well too which if you wanted to really go to the town on it and draw the blocks that'd be fine I'm using a 12 and a half degrees angle here at the top to draw in what would be my capping the capping is a precast capping it can be made in situ and um, they can be made deeper than what I'm drawing them here I'm only using 100 millimeters and putting them weep by the, the, the drip moldings at the edge so that uh, water will run off it and the flue that's at the very top actually can be a finishing flue and you can get lots of different types of finishing flues that just don't have the fire clay look and uh, they can be colored and have a shape in them some of them are called cannon tops because they look like a cannon and uh, It'd be a finishing flue that's at the top. The rest of them then are your standard flues that are running down and they have the interlock and the rebate in, into each of those. And at a scale of 1 to 10, it's quite difficult drawing that little bit of a detail that's on it here. So I'm running through this pretty quick. It's pretty slow and tedious going through each of these here. If you have to draw, draw quite a few flues, I would be saying just a general shape, spend a bit of time with one maybe at the top and uh, can I hurry the rest of them then just that you have the general shape of your flu because that be, can be quite time consuming doing that Now once I've my flues sorted out here, I can start to worry about spacings or my trimmers. So the back of the blocks, you want to allow where the trimmer rafter is, where it meets the stack, it has to be 40 millimeters away from the stack because you don't want it touching off of the stack for heat transfer. And uh, that's an important detail. You can complete my blocks in. And I've allowed from the bottom of the top slate there a 75 millimeter space to allow for water to run down and to the gutter part and all I'm doing is completing the rest of my slates I don't think they'd be terrible worried in the, an exam situation that they're absolutely the neatest in the world so long as they have a little overlap in their covering and uh, putting in the X's for the trimmers and my ridge board now from here I'm using a blue pen to highlight felt, felt at the ridge would actually cover over 600 millimeters that's down either side so it's actually a, just a roll just rolled along the top of the ridge board and put down over the felt that's down there but I'm continuing the felt down and up to the stack and then below it I'm continuing it right there uh, right up to the upstand I should really take it up a distance as well against the up the, the stack you can see I've stopped it a bit short there but uh, then I'm putting on the trays, the two red lines are my trays and the, the cover flashings and at the front I've used a green pen to highlight the apron and at the back is the upstand at the gully or the gutter at the back and I've shown the cover flashings coming down in red over those just to highlight what the, is happening there and uh, I'm putting in a hatch now for the blocks rather than having to go draw blocks into this and uh, there would be the capping is actually mortar jointed onto the top so I've left a, a little mortar joint at the top and my details of concrete for the capping insulation can be put in here it depends on the roof finish whether it's going to be um, if it was for wind air tightness and all that sort of thing you might have to, you would have to put on a, a sarkin board or a gut x board covering uh, I don't have that done here 
and I should leave a ventilation space. The film can be coloured in and dotted in here to show the, um, the cement, lime and sand mixed around the flues. And there would be a rendering on the chimney as well too, which will be done after all the flashings are sorted out. And that rendering will be finished off with a bell cast down below that there. So now my sizes of what I was looking at at the start. The height of the chimney should be 600 millimeters above the ridge. That's 600 millimeters plus from the top of the ridge, and then it should have at least a meter at the back of the um, of the of the chimney stack. And after that, there it's just a matter of taking time to go through all the different bits of details that you can possibly put in there to make sure that you get enough elements in that. And uh, I have all these uh, are this drawn posted on the website. So if you look at the link on the YouTube page, you'll be able to go to the uh, CNC technology page and get the drawn in PDF form. Just take it down from the construction studies tab and it'll be placed under um, under drawings and it'll be right beside one of the videos as well. And a few other little details there, like the 150mm upstand is, is a minimum. There's a broken line that's shown there running from each of the trays, which is the line of the soakers when they would be built in as well. The soakers can be bought and then placed in and built in, and they can be made to suit as you go along. And fashioning lead, it would be code 4 lead would be used, it has to, around this here it would have to be fashioned with a lead hammer, and it takes a bit of time and uh, patience when you're trying to fashion and shape the, the lead to go around the apron and the gully at the back. It can be a bit of, bit of work involved in that there and gradually just tapping it to take the shape. The soaker or the yeah, the lead soaker at the front where the cover flashing will come down over it uh, and mechanical fixing can be used to make sure that that stays in place along the front edge.